testimonial from one of our young people, Anai Garcia. When I was in a bad relationship, I felt like I was never enough. And I had to stay, especially when he would treat me wrong. And he would say a bunch of things to me that I felt wasn't right. But I still stayed because I thought that was the type of love that I deserved. And there was sometimes where my sister would witness. And I felt like, I felt so small. And he made me feel small. But then I went for help with Stephanie. And she told me that it wasn't right. It became serious when he started threatening me and my family. And I ignored the red flags because I thought that was that type of love that I think I deserve. I became aware of the situation and I put myself first, even though I still felt wrong about leaving him because I thought that maybe he'll realize that I was really the one for him. Today, I'm not just a part of a group. I am part of a community that I can call a family. I have people in the scene that I can talk to when I can't talk to my parents or my siblings or even a close friend. Stephanie has helped me through a lot, and especially when that happened, I still felt so small. But I remember that I had to put myself first above all. And I can help others now to realize that that's not the type of love that anybody deserves, to feel that they're not good enough. Thank you so much, Anai. And these are the stories that we're here to uplift, right? These are the stories of the young people who go through this form of abuse and do it alone because they don't know where to go to for help. They don't know who to go to and say, I'm not okay, or I'm not safe, or I'm scared because they're too scared to go to their parents or their school isn't supporting them, or their friends aren't even supporting them because they just don't know what to do. That's why we do this walk, to uplift those voices. So people like Anai, for other young people to know that we see you and we're here for you, that there is help out there, that there are people out there that care and want to see you safe and want to see you uplift yourself and empowered. And those words from a testimony of someone who has actually survived teen dating violence just shows you how prevalent it is and shows you how deeply it affects everyone. Her, the work, the community, Daughters of the Lotus program, we all feel it and we're all here to support these survivors. Thank you so much, Anai, and your strength means so much to us. Thank you. Next up, we have Q from Connect, who's gonna be saying a few words. Q has been at our walks from the very beginning and he has always spoke and it's such inspirational. Thank you, Q. Thank you, thank you. How's everyone doing? Yeah. First off, we need to lift up Stephanie, Daughters of the Lotus, and Antonia, and the whole Healing Center team. Yeah. Let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. I'm really not digging a low energy today. Yeah. Right? We're, what we're about to do is historical, right? We haven't been together in two years. Yeah. We've been through a lot. Right? We need to give ourselves not yet a round of applause, because we went through some hard times, right? We had some of you that are in school cannot go to school anymore. We were quarantined in our own homes. We were struggling with a city that was dealing with a pandemic. And not just only a, uh, the pandemic of COVID, but the pandemic of teen dating violence, the pandemic of domestic violence, the pandemic of sexual violence. There's so many intersecting issues that we were facing as a city. Families were struggling if they were gonna be furloughed, or if they're gonna have a job, or if we were gonna have a place to live. And not only through this quarantine, domestic violence and sexual violence and teen dating violence went up, right? Because we weren't able to tap into the services that are usually available to us. We were quarantined in with our abusive partners. So that's a lot to deal with, a lot of struggle, a lot of trauma, but we are also resilient people Right? We figure out ways to heal nevertheless. So that's, that's why I want you all to give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. I said to give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. All 
right, good. So now we are back in Brooklyn. There's a bridge over there. What is it called? Brooklyn Bridge. All right. So we are back after two years, and we are going to reclaim the bridge. Yeah. Woo! That is our goal today. We're going to reclaim the bridge. Now, I know you all have been to rallies, Black Lives Matter rallies, other movement rallies. The one thing, a common call that is said every rally is whose streets? Our streets. Whose streets? Our streets. Whose bridge? Our bridge. Whose bridge? Our bridge. All right. So this is about teens and teen dating, right? You are our leaders, just like the council member said, right now. Yeah. There's no time to wait. But one thing that we as adults will do, we will ally, ally with you. We will be partners in this. We will be, um, we will take direction and lead from you, right? We're in positions of power in some cases. We have more resources than you do, right? So we're gonna tap into our resources and make sure and provide for the things that you feel you need to overcome. The things that you feel you need for safety. You, the things that you need to hold people accountable, and not just the abusive partner, but us as adults. We want you to hold us accountable when we are not doing the things that we need to do to make sure that you are safe, that you feel that there's justice, that there's accountability, so that you can thrive as young people and thrive busting through the doors of adulthood. That is what we want. Yeah. We want to provide that for you. And it's great that the council member is here today. Because as an adult, we have our hands on the pot of money that is part of the solution to making sure that you have the things and the resources that you need. So we have a great council member here. Um, next month is budget negotiations at city council. And we're going to make sure that our local leaders are doing what they need to do to make sure that we are safe. Right? And they want to do this. But they have to hear from us where to direct the money and where the money should go. So we want to support all these agencies that have tables here, the ones that may not be here today, that are working around domestic violence, teen dating violence, sexual violence, any form of gender-based violence that's doing us harm. In this city, the greatest city in America, right? We're gonna go across probably the most famous bridge in the world. There are other bridges that are longer, there are other bridges that are prettier, but none are, none are more known than Brooklyn Bridge when you think about New York or when you think about the United States. So that is our bridge, and we are gonna reclaim our bridge. Because a bridge is a symbol, right? Of one side to the other side. That bridge is a symbol of transformation, right? We're gonna transform ourselves from hurt who are struggling from the harmed, and when we get to the other side of that bridge, we're going to be resilient, we're going to be healed, we're going to be very powerful, and that's what young people are. If we had took your lead a long time ago, we would have been in a better position right now. We would not be having this rally or this walk. We'd be talking about different things, not about how to prevent it, not how to stop it, to make sure that nothing else continues to happen. We're having different conversations about what young people are dealing with and going through, and we would not be talking about teen dating violence and teen dating violence awareness, because we would know about it, and we'd already have solutions and resources in place to deal with it. I'll stop there, but remember, whose streets? Our streets! Whose streets? Our streets! Hey, we're gonna be walking across Brooklyn Bridge now, right? It's not about the bridge per se, but people all over the world walk that bridge. So as we're going across that bridge, we need to have high, high energy, right? Yes. We want to let these people know, if they're from New York, from whatever part of the world they are, that we're doing this right here today. This is our day. These are our streets. That's our bridge. Thank you. Thank you, Q. Always inspirational and always brings out the energy for us. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Naeja, who's gonna be saying a few words. She is another Daughters of the Lotus member. 